Hello and welcome to the main course. Dish up some food for thought. In today's video, we are investigating the relationship between the moon and the earth and how it influences their movement in relation to one another. We usually say the moon orbits the earth and most of us are familiar with representations like this one. But it's not all that simple. When two or more bodies in space form a system, their respective masses play a big role in determining the characteristics of their movement. The movement we see here is typical when one of the two bodies is significantly heavier than the other. For example, a theoretical Earth with a thousand times the mass of its moon. However, the situation is quite different when the bodies have equal mass. We see that they now form a more compact system since they are orbiting around each other rather than one around the other. The point around which they orbit is now exactly in the middle between them. This point is where their gravitational pull on each other balances out and is called the barycenter or the center of mass of the system. It can lie on any point on the straight line between the centers of mass of the two bodies and is determined as follows from the masses of the bodies. To determine the position of the barycenter, we take a weighted average of the positions of the bodies, weighted by their mass. This happens in three dimensions of course, but we consider only the y-axis in order to illustrate the idea in a simple way. Each body's position is multiplied by its mass. These weighted positions are added up and the average is calculated by dividing by the sum of the masses. The weighted position for the Earth is a thousand times zero, so zero, while for the Moon it's a thousand times ten, so ten thousand. Dividing the total by the sum of the masses, 2000, we calculate that the barycenter lies on position 5. This is precisely halfway between the 0 of the Earth and the 10 of the Moon because the two have the same mass in this example. To visualize the idea of an average, it helps to think about it as a voting process. To get an unweighted average, each body receives one vote to select the position of the barycenter and each body wants to focus the barycenter at its own center of mass. Therefore, the Earth votes for position 0 and the Moon for position 10. The average of the votes, namely 5, is taken as the barycenter. But, for a weighted average, the number of votes each body receives varies according to its mass. The heavier the object, the more votes it receives. And as its number of votes increases, it is able to move the barycenter closer and closer to its own center of mass. You can also think about it as a tug of war between the bodies, where each body can give the end of the rope at its end one tug with all its might to see how close to its center of mass it can get the center of the rope. In this scenario, the might or strength of the body represents its mass. If the opponents are equally strong, they tug on the rope with the same force and the barycenter stays in the middle. But as soon as one body is slightly stronger than the other, it can pull the barycenter a bit closer to itself. When the opponent's strength is significantly smaller than the body's strength, there is almost no resistance and the barycenter can be pulled to almost align with the body's center of mass. If we now display the moon, earth and distance between them according to scale, we can calculate and indicate its barycenter. The Earth's mass is just more than 81 times the mass of the Moon and the barycenter is therefore close to the Earth's center of mass. It lies about 4,672 kilometers outward from the Earth's center of mass, which is about 73% of the radius of the Earth. Let's now quickly consider today's other factor that influences the relationship between the Moon and the Earth the tilt of their axes. Up until now, our model has presented the Moon and the Earth with their north poles straight up and rotation around an axis that is exactly vertical. If this was true in real life, their equators would always be aligned to the horizontal plane. However, the Earth's axis is tilted 23.44 degrees, while that of the Moon is tilted 6.68 degrees, which also tilts their equators in relation to the horizontal plane. In our next video, we will consider the effect of the Sun on the Earth due to this tilt, but for now, we are only interested in the movement of the Moon and the Earth 
in relation to one another. Because the moon's axis is slightly tilted and it doesn't precisely rotate around the center of mass of the Earth, the orbital path of the moon is not a perfect circle on the horizontal plane. There are small variations that cause interesting phenomena over the long term. The first of these is that the moon is constantly moving slightly closer to and then slightly further away from the Earth. The effect of this is that the moon looks somewhat smaller at certain times and slightly larger at others. The distance between the moon and the Earth varies between about 360,000 km and 406,000 km. There are other factors that cause these minimum and maximum distances to vary over time as well. But generally, the difference between the size of the moon when viewed at different times from the Earth is proportional to the visualization of this model, namely between 12 and 14%. In addition, the moon's orbital path is also not precisely on the horizontal plane. If it was, a total solar eclipse would have been visible from Earth every single time the moon passed by through the sky, since the moon would move precisely in between the sun and the Earth. But in reality, the moon's orbital path constantly tilts this way and that in relation to the horizontal plane. Which means that it only moves precisely in between the sun and the earth sporadically. This tilt also causes the moon to wobble slightly over time. Let's zoom in on the moon to see this wobbling. Firstly, we must consider why we only ever see one side of the moon from earth like in this model. It happens because the moon rotates once around its own axis and the same time it takes to orbit the earth once, namely 27.3 days. The rotation therefore happens at the same speed as the tempo at which the orbit would turn the other side towards the earth, and in this way the same side is always facing earth. However, the effect of the slight tilt is that the moon shows a little bit extra of the dark edge as it runs through its cycle. We now combine all these factors and look at four views simultaneously. The Earth from the Sun, top left, the Moon from the Earth, top right, the Sun from the Earth, bottom left, and the Earth from the Moon, bottom right. We start off with the total eclipse of the Sun, where the Moon moves precisely in between the Earth and the Sun. Related to this is when the Earth moves precisely in between the Moon and the Sun, which causes a total eclipse of the Moon. When the Moon is slightly further away from the horizontal plane, we see a partial eclipse of the Sun. Because the Earth is so much larger than the Moon, the shadow behind the Earth is large enough to still fall on the Moon even if the Earth is not precisely in between the Sun and the Moon. When the Moon moves even further away from the horizontal plane, an eclipse of the sun does not occur, since none of the light beams are being blocked by the moon. Of course, there are many other factors to keep in mind, especially over the long term, but I hope these visual representations helped to convey the relationship between the earth and the moon in an understandable way. Please subscribe and switch on notifications to stay informed of new content.